My bookshelves are a disaster. They keep getting bigger and they really need a hug. Am I projecting? I'll never tell. Yes. Hello booktube, my name is Kate. This is my channel chat for Kate. What am I doing with my hands? I don't know what to do with my hands. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving and I wanted to do that stereotypical thing where I talk about things I'm thankful for because like it doesn't hurt to be grateful. So these are my bookish blessings. I did this as if I was gonna insert some glittery graphic and a little tingling sound. But I don't really know if I even have those skills. So. I just put all of my books in a random pile and we're just gonna go for it. Yep. Alright, so I don't know how many books are on this list. Because I didn't count. None, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine. I feel like that's gonna bother me later. But that's okay. There are nine. Okay. So these are all books that have impacted me in some way and they have filled something in my life that I needed at some point in time. And so, yeah, that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna talk about all the things. Cool. The first book, or should I say series, is the Alex Ryder series by Anthony Horowitz and book number one is Stormbreaker, which is the one I've read the most times because every reread, of course, you read the first one. So this series got me really into spies when I was younger. It was an escape for me when I was younger, which I desperately needed. These books kept me company when I didn't really have a ton of friends and have any siblings. I felt a lot of loneliness growing up and I felt like these books really did a lot for me at the time. They're about a teenage spy who works for MI6 military intelligence whatever he's a spy he's a spy and he's like 14 and he has all these fun gadgets and it's really cool they made a really crappy movie about it don't watch the movie um, or do and laugh I don't control your life soon to be a major motion picture so you can see when I got this it was before the terrible movie but it was a really great book and it was full of adventure and it got me into mystery-ish sort of books with spies and whatnot. I haven't read any adult spy books. I've only read YA spy books because I read them all when I was younger and now I read a bunch of fantasy and yeah. I should go back to reading spy books though because he writes adult spy novels as well. Yeah. Book number two is Identical by Ellen Hopkins. I will say Ellen Hopkins writes about a lot of mental health um, topics. This one is about dissociative identity disorder. Um, she does a lot of research when she does these books, but she does not, I don't know what experiences she has with mental illness, but she does use a lot of mental illness in her, um, books. Some may think that she does it as a plot device, um, or speaking for others. Um, there has been a, an issue with her recently wanting to write a book from, um, I'm not really sure what perspective it was, but it was about I don't know if it was about slavery or something around those lines, but it was, it, she's been criticized for that because it's not her story to tell. And so, I, I don't know, but they, her books actually got me into alternative formatting um, and showed me that you can, that books can be more than just one thing. Um, and I really appreciate that because it made me more open to things like the Illuminae Files and um, the Themis Files, which are both science fiction series. Um, using alternative formatting and I really like that and I love that it was poetry and actually her writings got me very interested in mental illness and so I started researching a lot of that when I was younger um because of her books and I feel like part of my um sort of life path was impacted by reading her books because of that. Next is V for Vendetta by Alan Moore and David Lloyd. So a lot of people sort of know what this is about because there's a great movie with Natalie Portman, I think. Yes. Yes. And, yeah. Remember, remember the 5th of November, which is actually the day me and my husband started dating. But, um, this actually was a gift, so it was, it was a blessing in several layers, but it was a gift from an online friend that I had made, um, named Lewis, and he was really, really great. He actually wrote me a uh, sort of a note right here, um, and it, and it was just really special to me because I'd never really received book mail. It was my first book mail, <laughs> and um, I loved graphic novels up to that point, and I loved Alan Moore's um, writing in Watchmen as well. 
this was just very meaningful to me because of that, and I loved the story of Beef for Vendetta, and... Yep. The next one is Slaughterhouse-Five. I've talked about this book before, but Slaughterhouse-Five is a book that I read in my English one class in high school. It was like a college credit English class. We wrote a lot, and I started really writing in that class, and we would review and read books, and we would learn about um, literary motifs and things like that. And after reading this book, I learned how to look for sort of symbolism and to think about that. Like, before before reading this, I didn't really think to look for, like, symbolism in books. So this actually completely changed my reading experience after reading this book. So, I won't say that, like, the content of the book was really impactful to me or, like, the subject matter or the, you know, any any of that. But just reading this book taught me how to read more, not really critically, but with with sort of symbolism in mind and what is the purpose of this book? What is it trying to tell me? How is it trying to tell me this? What are the sort of subtextual elements to this story and things like that? And so that's why I really appreciate this book by Kurt Vonnegut. The next one is a book that a lot of people know about and it's Milk and Honey by Ruby Carr. This is a poetry book that talks about a lot of things in her life that she has gone through and the way she talks about things are so sort of raw and passionate and even though I haven't had the same experiences as her, um, I, I connect with the level of emotion that she's experiencing with these things and the level of feeling she puts behind her words. She kind of gave me language to talk about some things and I, I love the way that she kind of used her words to do that. <sighs> also, if I'm breathing really heavy during this video, it's because I think I have a sinus infection. I've been sick for like two weeks and it's like really hard to get air when I'm talking this much. So. The next two books are The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman and The Path of Destruction in the Darth Bane Trilogy in the Star Wars Legends Universe by Drew Carpishan. I'm thankful for both of these books for the same reason. They both actually managed to get me out of a reading slump at some point in my life. Um, and I really appreciate both of them for getting me back into reading. The Graveyard Book is about a boy who's basically raised by ghosts and it's, it's great. It actually also helped me not be so freaked out by graveyards and it made me kind of feel like they're more of a peaceful place and less of a scary place. And this book is about the Sith in the Star Wars universe. And Darth Bane is actually the Sith that came up with the Rule of Two, which is that there should always be one Sith Lord and one Sith Apprentice. And his apprentice is Darth Xana, who is like the coolest Sith ever. And I wish there was more on her, more books about her, because she's so cool. And now there won't be any, because legends are legends now, and not just an extended universe. They're all fake. Everything's dumb. Let's just erase an entire universe. I'm not bitter. The next one I've talked about several times, and a lot of these books I have talked about a bunch of times, because... I'm thankful for them. There's a reason I talk about them. Give me a break. Get off my back. The next one is the Serafina series. Um, this is Serafina and the Black Cloak. The reason I'm thankful for these, um, I've talked about before by Robert Beatty, is because they take place in the Biltmore House, which is where I got engaged. Um, it's not very far from my home, and it kind of brings fantasy into my neck of the woods and you don't see a lot of that around here, and so I appreciate it. And um, It has mythology around catamounts, which are cats that are humans that are also wild cats. It's cool. It's a whole thing. But it, it makes it makes my home feel more magical and I really appreciate that because I don't like this area so much. So thanks Robert Beattie. The next is A Tragic Kind of Wonderful by Eric Lindstrom and this is the first book that I ever read that had bipolar disorder discussed in it and so I really appreciate that by Eric Lindstrom. I appreciate that effort and that validation um, because I do have bipolar disorder, which I talk about all the time. I also have post-traumatic stress disorder, so if you have any recommendations where that is discussed in a way that is actually good, let me know, because I would love to read some. So, yeah. Next is An Unkindness of Magicians by Cat Howard. This book was just really beautiful. There's nothing that really changed my, my view or my perspective, but it was just such a gorgeous book. And... Like, not to be dramatic, but I would actually cut off my own leg for this book. So, there's that. The story is beautiful. The fantasy is amazing. I was just so drawn in to this book. And the story uh, and all the characters were so just deep. And the relationships between them were just so... Ugh. Everything was so great about this book. I have a review of it. So, I'm not going to talk a ton about it. I'll link the review somewhere. That way, probably. I don't know. Yes. Then we have a series I have it actually finished yet and that is the Sandman series by Neil Gaiman. It's a graphic novel series and the reason that this is on the list is because there's a character in um, the series and their name is 
Desire. And the reason that this is on the list is because there's a character named Desire in this book. There are several person personified um, ideas in the series, and Desire is one of them. Desire is gender fluid, and they kind of go back and forth. Um, sometimes they refer to themselves as he or she or they. I, I kind of really enjoy that. It sort of made me... It sort of made me think more about how their personality of that character is not defined by gender or label and that they don't really connect with that and so I connected with that because I don't really feel very connected to gender in general and so I, I really appreciated that. Plus no game is awesome. And then while I'm running out of air still because I don't feel well, I really want to just thank booktube for being such an accepting community to me. Um, I joined it in like March or May? One of the M months. I don't know. I'm so bad at keeping up with this year. It's been a mess. But I really do appreciate all the friends that I've made in this community. I appreciate the opportunity it has given me to talk about things like books and just kind of nerd out and talk about mental health and create a book club based around reading books with mental health. Um, and so I just really appreciate every single one of you that subscribe to my channel and comment on my videos and like my videos and talk to me on Twitter. So just thank you so much for being there for me and I hope I can continue being there for you as well. Um, you've been a great support to me this year. Um, thanks. I don't want to get emotional. I have enough of that. So let's think of something else that won't make you cry. And you know what? Let's go ahead and throw in a quick booktuber spotlight. This video's booktuber spotlight is going to go to Jessie from Bowties and Books. They've been a really great friend to me. Um, we've talked a lot recently and I just really appreciate what they've done. Their their videos are really awesome. They've grown super quick. They're going to keep growing, I can tell. Um, but they did some really great skits around October time. They're doing some really cool things to sort of incorporate a bunch of different booktubers into their videos. They have a lot of great ideas. They have a great personality. And they're just a really supportive sort of force in the community. So I really appreciate everything that they've done. And that's all. Before you go, I would love if you left a comment of something that you're thankful for, a book that you're thankful for, a booktuber you're thankful for, whatever. Something that you're thankful for and that involves books, booktube, whatever, in the community. Um, and if you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Tripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm pulling up a fight